VicHealth's creating healthy workplaces, reducing prolonged sitting in the workplace. For many of us, work is where we spend up to a third of our day, so it makes sense that our experiences at work can have a major impact on our health and well-being. Apart from musculoskeletal disorders, prolonged sitting also contributes to weight gain and obesity. Currently in Australia, 5 million people are overweight, including 1.3 million classified as obese. We lose 4 million days of productivity from our workplaces each year attributed to overweight and obesity. The total direct financial cost was estimated to be $8.3 billion in 2008, with lost productivity estimated at $3.6 billion. Preventive efforts will have significant long-term health and economic benefits. Reducing instances of preventable chronic diseases such as type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease linked to prolonged sitting would help reduce the current Australian health expenditure of $11 billion. Workplaces influence our physical, mental and financial well-being, which in turn affects the health of families, communities and society. With 11.4 million Australians in workplaces, 70% in full-time employment and each month working a total of 1.6 million hours, workplaces are ideal to promote health and well-being to a large audience. VicHealth's Creating Healthy Workplaces program aims to find innovative ways to make workplaces healthier, more positive places. To achieve this goal, we've researched international and Australian studies on best practice in workplace health. One major area of focus is reducing prolonged sitting in the workplace. Time spent in sedentary behaviour, sitting or reclining with little or no expenditure of energy at work. Prolonged sitting is a unique public and occupational health issue, quite distinct from lack of physical activity. Health experts agree that prolonged sitting could have serious implications for working adults. Among the potential health impacts of prolonged sitting are an increase in blood glucose and insulin levels, heightening the risk of type 2 diabetes, the possibility of weight gain and increased waistlines, musculoskeletal problems, and increases in systolic blood pressure and triglycerides, leading to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. You spend the majority of your adult life in the workplace, where prolonged, unbroken time spent sitting is common. On average, office-based employees are highly inactive at work, spending 75% of work hours in restricted movement time. International research estimates that a typical office-based employee spends around 80,000 hours seated in the course of their working life. This has been exacerbated by advances in and the widespread availability and use of technology and labour-saving devices like PCs, Skype, email and so on. This leads to a huge imbalance. Sitting time at work is significantly more than active time during non-working hours and the rise in workplace sitting hasn't been compensated for by increased physical activity outside of work. So what does this mean for those who do moderate to vigorous exercise for 30 minutes a day? Surprisingly, Australian studies have found there's no benefit for those with active lifestyles outside of work if they sit for long periods of time. So who's at risk? Office-based staff are the largest single occupational group in Australia, representing more than 12% of the working population. Others at risk include those working in the transportation industry, such as truck, taxi, bus and train drivers, as well as airline pilots. Also at risk are workers in highly mechanised trades, including crane operators, single driver garbage collectors and sewing machine operators. Reducing and breaking up prolonged sitting for these groups would lead to the greatest population health benefits. While prolonged workplace sitting is an emerging area with new research coming to light, the need to intervene now is evident. Real change will only come with a major shift in Australian workplace culture. So what can be done now to avoid prolonged sitting at work? Redesign your work environments. Allow postural changes by supplying employees with sit-stand workstations and relocate waste bins and printers. Provide telephone headsets to allow movement during telephone calls. Conduct standing or walking meetings. 
Encourage face-to-face -face interactions instead of emails. Increase the number of breaks from sitting time, in addition to conventional breaks like morning tea or lunch. Importantly, research has shown an increased level of breaks showed no detrimental effect on productivity. For more information on creating healthy workplaces, visit vichealth.vic.gov.au forward slash workplace.